lucked Providence Canyon and I'd added to Stone Mountain, two and a half to three hours away. While on uh, US 280, we saw the home of the 8th Division, Fort Bennings. Abram tanks lined up all along the perimeter. So while distracted by the 68 ton monsters, all of a sudden the GPS tells me to exit on right. Without thinking I did, but it was 8th Division Road exit. One exit before the I-185 we were supposed to get out of. Well, once at the uh, entrance boot, the guard said it happens all the time because GPS's are being scrambled to keep others away. It's funny because the GPS led me right to them. Well, we made a U-turn and got back on US 280 and finally took the exit I-185 North towards Atlanta then took I-85 North into I-285 East and then 78 East One point, mile. We exit A on right towards Stone Mountain Park Main Entrance First left at Stonewall Jackson Drive. And drive all the way down to the campground on the right hand side. To the right, you can see the top of Stone Mountain. We finally arrived at the campground. just before closing time. We have a site right on the M loop, M as in Mary. And we have a waterfront site as well. That's great news.
gave us a beautiful sight right on the lake. You couldn't ask for a better spot. We were on Trail M. No, sir. We couldn't ask for better than this. This is beautiful. We even had some visitors. Little duckies visiting us. Welcoming us, I guess. Look at this funny tree here. Erosion wants it falling into the lake, but looking at these roots, it won't let go. It's pretty cool. I need to finish setting up here. Got all my hoses and uh, the sewer and the electric cooked up. Uh, need to get my awning down so we can uh, start having some fun here. Yeah, Ozzy wants to play. As soon as we're finished settling in, we're taking a ride to the cover bridge before it gets dark. There's the route from the campground. We go down Stonewall Jackson, all the way around the lake across the bridge, and at Robert E. Lee, we make a right. And we end up at a circle here. But we take a right at the circle, going into the covered bridge lane. We take that down to the covered bridge. Which it crosses into Indian Island. Drive it on uh, Robert E. Lee Boulevard. As you will notice, it's a one way. The other lane, the oncoming lane, is for bicycles and pedestrians only. If you go slow enough, you'll look both sides, you see lots of deer here. takes a little getting used to with those bicycles coming at you. As you approach the circle, if you stay to the right, just follow the road that goes right down the hill. And while I drive down this beautiful scenic road, I want to tell a story on how this bridge was made, who made it, and how it ended up here. It was built by Washington King, a 19th century African American bridge builder, who in 1891 built a covered bridge in Athens, Georgia. In 1961, that same bridge was moved here to Stone Mountain Park and now connects Indian Island to the mainland. I've been waiting to drive in this bridge for 12 years. Back then we were not allowed to drive on it. I can see how robbers could hide on the above timbers and jump on unsuspecting victims. now on Indian Island. They did a real nice job here with the uh, pavers, the brick pavers on the circle here uh, with, and the park a lot. It's really nice. You can park your car here and walk the trails all around the island. Walk your dog. Dogs are allowed. The construction of this bridge is still the original way. It's held together by pegs only. No nuts and bolts, no nails, no screws. Named after the covered bridge builder, King's Trail. It ranges from easy to moderate in terrain, and it's three quarters of a mile in length, the Purple Trail. The blazed in orange can help add mileage and scenery to the hike. See you all soon more of Stone Mountain Park. Have a great
great day.